My name's William Crow. I'm a pilot in the U.S. Navy. My dad used to be a pilot in the United States Air Force, so growing up we moved around a lot. New towns, new schools, new friends. Dad used to take my kid brother Charlie and me to the air base at whatever town we lived in at the time. Every year there'd be new planes, new models. Every year they were faster and stronger, each one better than the one before. Then there was the accident. Some pilot screwed his landing and crashed. Dad was working in the hangar. He ran out and pulled the pilot from the burning plane right before it went up. Dad was badly burned. He was lucky to be alive, but he couldn't fly anymore. He got a discharge and a pension. Well, the pension was never enough, and pretty soon we found ourselves farming a patch of dirt just to get by. Out there, the only things we had plenty of were dirt and sky. Our only entertainment was a busted old crop duster, so Charlie and I became the Dirt Duster Brothers. We flew the wings off that old crate. As much fun as that was, it couldn't last forever. The Navy was our way out. When we got old enough, we joined up. I graduated from flight training at Pensacola. Charlie trained as a sailor. Before long, we got our postings. I was stationed at Hickam Field, Pearl Harbor. Charlie was on the USS Arizona, a great name for a great battleship, the pride of the fleet. We've been caught off guard by a Japanese surprise attack. You must take off at once to avoid being destroyed on the ground by their attack planes. Once airborne, you must defend the planes still on the ground and our vital fueling facilities. If you fail, our fleet will be severely hampered in their ability to strike back after this vicious attack. It seems the war has finally begun, Lieutenant Crow. Pearl Harbor was hell. One minute I was thinking about getting out of bed, the next minute the sky's so thick with planes I could barely see the sun.
Score another one for me. Got the chat up here.
Dear Mom and Dad, there's no easy way to tell you this. Charlie's dead. I wanted you to hear it from me before the man from the Navy arrives, but I'm not sure this letter will beat their telegraph. Charlie was on the USS Arizona, which was moored on Battleship Row. The Japs knew what they were after. They hit the ships while our boys were still on their bunks. The Arizona went down during the attack. As she sank, we could hear the boys trapped inside, screaming for our help, but we couldn't get them out. I'm sorry I can't write more, but as of this morning, we're at war. I'm shipping out for Wake Island in a couple of hours. I swear this to you now. Those Japs are going to pay for what they did to our family and our country. William Crow. The attack on Pearl Harbor pulled us into the war. In just a couple of hours, hundreds of Jap pilots hit our fleet hard, decimating our battleships. Thankfully, our carriers were at sea during the attack. This was quite a piece of good luck. But their attack on Pearl was just the beginning. The Japs hit all over the Pacific, from Malaya to the Dutch East Indies. They did a lot of damage, but they also stirred up a hornet's nest. We were mad, and our rage was directed one way, west to Japan. When we entered the war, we thought we'd get it over quick. We'd be home by Christmas telling stories about how we kicked the Japs' ass. Man, we were so wrong. Hitting Pearl Harbor wasn't enough for them. They wanted Wake Island, too. Now, Wake's just an airfield on a speck of sand in the middle of the Pacific, but they wanted it bad. You have been sent here to reinforce our badly undermanned fighter squadron. We've been holding down our own, but Jap bombing in the last two days has severely depleted our squadron and resources. We're now down to just four Wildcats. A group of Japanese Pete Scout planes have just flown over the HQ. Luckily, these planes don't have radios. Shoot them down before they can reach the safety of their fleet and hand over the recon photos of our locations. After Pearl, the Japs headed for our base at Wake Island. If we lost Wake, then the rest of our bases would be within their reach. They weren't going to get it without one hell of a fight. Roger that, Wake Control. We'll splash those nosy SOBs for you. We're rolling. Out.
Anything that's cold is fine by me. Well done, man. We've held them all for another day. Everyone return to base and get some rest. They'll be back. Japanese have been bombing us like clockwork. Always at 11, and always from the south. Today we were gonna head out to meet them. But we just spotted two landing groups heading in from the west and the east. Yesterday's bombing has left us desperately under-resourced. So you and your wing will need to help on both fronts. Your wing, Baker Wing, must deal with the landings heading for the western shore. Abel Wing will deal with the eastern landing. Deal with them quickly because there's a bombing raid coming at 1100.
target. Taken care of.
the relentless bombardment has knocked out the majority of our defenses and aircraft. We cannot hold out much longer, so we've begun evacuation procedures. The Japanese are sending yet another wave of landing craft along with assault troops to overrun the island. You must intercept the boats before they reach the shore. You must hold off the Japanese long enough to give us time to evacuate key personnel. A senior admiral is here on wake, and it is vital that he does not fall into enemy hands. Once he boards his Catalina, you are to escort him to the Enterprise. Now we're going after the seaplane base. See what you can do to help. 
help, Charlie 2. If the seaplane base is destroyed, the Admiral will be trapped.
Shadows coming in again. Watch yourself. Somehow I managed to get the Admiral back to the Enterprise in one piece. His cat was so full of holes it just about sank right after they landed. Later we got to talking. He was mighty grateful. He even said I'd done a fine job, which was a big compliment from an old hard ass. He told me he was transferring to another carrier, the Lexington, and he wanted me to come with him. We were lucky to have any carriers at all. If they were at Pearl like they were supposed to be, we'd be out of the war already. Before I knew it, I was on board the Lady Lex with a whole new crew. We were on our way to the Marshall Islands. My new squadron leader was a guy named Callahan. The Admiral had put in a good word for me, and I was even assigned my own wing. After two weeks of clockwork bombing raids and landings, the Japs took wake. Our servicemen fought long and hard. Even the civvies pitched in. I guess they were all hoping that the Enterprise would show up to help. In the end, though, the Japs prevailed, and the commander of Wake surrendered on the 23rd of December. Those Marines on Wake Island were outnumbered, but never outfought. The Japanese have established a string of formidable bases throughout the Marshall Islands. They have now constructed an airfield at their base on Taroa. The proximity of this airfield poses a serious threat to our carrier fleet. Our latest scouting mission has revealed construction of two radar towers. These towers are an early warning system to alert them of any approaching aircraft. Your mission is to help knock out the radar towers and then destroy the remaining air defenses. This must be accomplished before 1400, as we have C-47s en route to land paratroopers to capture the base. The Jap base at Tarot was fat with supplies and equipment, and we were going to blow that place to kingdom come. We wanted to show them they weren't the only game in town. Okay, this is Lieutenant Commander Callahan. Calling all units in Victor Squadron. Line up in formation over the Lexington. Our bearing is 050. Over. Pro, you're in charge of your wing now. I hope you paid attention during training. Yeah, we're ready to go, sir. Pro, head for the zone point to the east of the fleet. We'll rendezvous with Taroa. Break formation. Roger that.
Japanese radar towers on Taroa. All pilots throttle to the max. Keep an eye out for bogeys. They know we're coming. You guys take the south radar tower. Murphy, Fanshawe, come with me. We'll go after the north tower. Understood. I won't let you down, sir. After you've taken out the radar, go after their planes and try to hit them on the ground. This is Victor Baker. Target destroyed. South radar is down. Nice work, bro. Now try to hit their planes on the ground. We've taken out the North Tower. Take that, Tokyo. Good work, boys. Looks like we caught the Japs with their pants down. Yeah, nailed him!
brake formation. Yes, sir.
Japanese have overrun one of our observation posts and captured an entire platoon of troops. One of the officers there was working directly for Pacific Theater Command. If the enemy discovers his identity, they will show no restraint in finding out what he knows. We need him, and the rest of the prisoners out there, but the POW camp is on an island fortress. You are to neutralize the prison's defenses and breach the cell block walls. The commando strike force will land on the beach. With your support, they will escort the POWs from the island. As Lieutenant Commander Callahan is still recovering from the wounds he received from your last mission, you are temporarily assigned command of Easy Squadron's four Corsairs. Position, men. Defending the area. Too easy, boys. Not even a warm up. Wing leader, I've spotted a radio tower. We better take it out before they call in for reinforcements. Adopt formation. Commence rocket attack. Defend this position, men. Break formation.
must like you. He's tied on your tail. Engage at will. Yes, sir. Now, sir. Easy squadron. We need some help here. The Japanese have us pinned down. Yes, sir. We've got an incoming from the southwest. We have an unknown radar in contact to the southwest. Yeah, nailed him!
sir. Brake formation. Roger that. The ace I fought over the Marshall Islands was Kazuma Yamashita. He was part of the infamous 13th Airborne Squadron who had led the attack on Pearl Harbor. 
These guys put the final bombs into the Arizona. These were the guys who killed Charlie. The 13th Airborne had the Jap Navy's best flyers, and they put them in their best planes. Callahan said I was lucky to be alive. He'd fought him before, and I was lucky it wasn't Shunagawa, their leader. He was the best flyer Callahan had ever seen, and he was racking up kills all over the Pacific. But I'd survived the fight and brought the Zero down in one piece. It was weird to fly, light as a feather and armed to the teeth. The plane was crated up and shipped back to the Naval Intelligence boys in San Diego. The guys we rescued from the POW camp had only been in there about a month, but they were in bad shape. They'd been starved and beaten by the Japs. Well, I got talking to one of them, a guy named Tom Stewart. Turns out that he was a pilot who'd been shot down and he was itching to fly again. Callahan found a place for him in one of the other wings of our squad. So ex-prisoner of war Tom Stewart got another chance to fly for his country. Callahan ran a tight squad, and before we knew it, we were brushing up on our torpedo runs and dive bombing for the battles ahead. Our attacks on the Marshall Islands only damaged the Japanese base at Taroa. Elsewhere, the fighting continued. The Japs dug themselves in and even had a few significant victories. They sank their first carrier, the Langley, and our biggest warship in the Far East, the cruiser Houston. So far, we hadn't managed to hit them back. We started to figure we'd be in the Pacific a lot longer than we originally thought. In April of 42, things were looking pretty bad. Morale was low, both in the Pacific and back home. One of our commanders came up with a daring plan to strike a blow at the Japanese. Not on some island somewhere, but right on their mainland. It was called the Doolittle Raid. Our grease monkeys modified a bunch of B-25s to take off from carriers, something they were never meant to do. They launched from the Hornet and bomb factories on the Japanese mainland. Didn't do a hell of a lot of damage, but it did show the Japs that we had a few tricks of our own. They were filling our breath on the back of their necks now. Some of the boys who flew the B-25s had to ditch in the ocean, but a few managed to crash land in China. Of the 80 crew, 71 made it back. We heard later that the Japs killed 250,000 Chinese just for helping our boys. Accurate torpedo bombing is vital to our war effort. So today we need you to fly a training mission with Lieutenant Commander Callahan so he can show you the ropes. You'll be using live torpedoes against a wrecked transport that was hit by Japanese bombers several days ago. It's dead in the water but still floating, so at least you can get some target practice in when we scuttle it. The Jap Navy was headed for Australia, but we cut them off in the Coral Sea. Well, Crow, word is you're a pretty good flyer. This little torpedo drill shouldn't cause you any trouble. First of all, torpedoes need to be dropped from way down low. You need to get right down to the deck. You have to slow right down, or the torp will skip off the water at any old angle. Of course, normally it's a lot harder than this to hit a moving target, but you should have no problems with hitting this one. Okay, he shot his fish, now it's my turn. Torpedo, running clean!
Lexington, this is Fox One. The Japs have sent a squadron of subs to repair the damaged one. We are picking them up on radar, Fox One. Hold tight and do what you can to harass them. These cargo subs have been carrying some pretty important cargo between Japan, Germany, and the Kongan territory. Whatever it is, the Japs are trying hard to protect it. Double your efforts, Fox One. We need that sub sent to the bottom of the ocean. Lexington, that sub's making a run for it. Oh, you better take that sub out before it can die. These roof fighters are just a zero with a flow bolted on. Torpedo running clean! Yes! That is one sub who's submerging for the last time!
That's some fancy torpedo work. The Japanese are tightening their hold on the Solomon Islands to prevent any future Allied counterattacks. If they get a stronger foothold in the area, it will allow them to attack Northern Australia. Through the coded radio intercepts, we have learned that the heavy carriers, the Shokaku and the Zukaku, both veterans of Pearl Harbor, are here in the Coral Sea. They are accompanied by the Shoho, a smaller carrier. Our scouts have spotted the Shoho. You are to attack her immediately. Other wings will deal with the other threats. sir. We'll give him one for Pearl. Okay, Crow, you're in position. I need you when you're done with this to take out those destroyers so that our devastators can come in straight and low. Once those destroyers are gone, they'll pound the flat top with a few fish. Then you boys can finish her off with some dive bombing. Go! Not bad, bro. That's one down. Keep going. What are your orders, sir? Engage at will. Yes, sir.
Buy a new guy? That nearly creaked my skull! Sorry, Cunningham. You saved when I thought you were gonna say. Good hit, Crow. Devastator Squadron, commence your torpedo run. That's it. She's a sitting duck, Crow. Take your wing in and put a few thousand pound love letters through that deck. Top. Good work, men. Charlie and Dog Wings got the show ho. We've damaged the Chicago pretty heavily. Time to head back to the carrier. Damn shame we couldn't nail those other two carriers. Still, we'll get them later. It's gonna be a long war.
nothing left for you boys to worry about. The rest of the squadron had already started celebrations when I landed. We'd finally managed to hit back at the Japs and the Shoho was well on its way to the bottom of the Pacific. Later, Callahan and I headed down to the hangar deck to check the damage to our planes. We heard a noise and someone ran off. We didn't catch him, but we found a chunk of metal wedged in the ammo tray of my Corsair. We'd surprised some bastard who tried to sabotage my plane. Callahan and I decided not to tell anyone. We didn't want the other pilots to panic. After that, I personally checked every inch of my plane before every mission. The Battle of the Coral Sea was the first ever battle between ships that never even saw each other. Just hundreds of planes attacking each other and the carriers over the open ocean. The Japs did more damage to us than we did to them at Coral. They sank the Lexington and one of our destroyers. But we did manage to sink one of their carriers and damage another the Shikaku. Even though we lost the battle, strategically we kind of won. First, we stopped the Japs' advance. Second, and more importantly, we took out two of their carriers for later battles. 
Back in the U.S., our intelligence operation codenamed MAGIC was decoding Japanese communications. MAGIC discovered Japanese plans for another surprise attack, this time against Midway. The Japs made it look like they were attacking the Aleutian Islands up near Alaska, so that we would send part of our fleet away from Midway. But we knew what they were up to, and we weren't about to get caught off guard again. It was make or break time for us in the Pacific. In the lead up to any decisive naval battle, both sides seek to gain the upper hand through the element of surprise. To spot your enemy without being seen in return is a vital part of achieving that strategic advantage. We know the Japanese fleet is heading for Midway now. We need to spot them before they can get within attack range. We're sending out as many patrol planes as we can keep up in the air. Overwork has put several of our pilots in the sick bay, so we've seconded you from Yorktown to the Midway base. Your mission is to patrol your assigned course. If you spot any enemy activity, make sure you get photos of the task force, then return to base. Good hunting, Lieutenant. Thanks to the code breakers at Magic, we knew where and when the Japs were going to attack next. We weren't going to be surprised again like at Pearl Harbor. This was our chance to return the favor they did for us at Pearl. Howdy there, Patrol 5 PBY-12. This is Midway, healing you on the radio. Are you hearing us, over? Loud and clear, Midway. What's the weather like, over? Pretty clear all along your flight path, BBY. Maybe a little cloudy. Watch out for ambushes and enemy scouts. The skies are a little busy out there today. Your heading is 280, BBY 12.
assistance if you can, sir. So, that's one of their new super battleships. I'm sure glad I'm not in a boat with that monster prowling around here. We've only found two light carriers so far. I mean, where the hell's the rest of the carrier division?
That's it, boys. The job's done. Time to haul our fat ass out of here. We hear you loud and clear, sir. <laughs> Midway, this is Lieutenant Crow on PBY-12. We're returning from patrol with recon photos of the Japanese fleet. Oh, you found them. Good work, Crow. Sorry about the welcome, but we're a little jumpy. We got attacked by two Japanese flying boats this morning, and I don't feel like being woken up by a bomb instead of coffee. Anyway, you're clear to land, PBY-12. Thanks, Midway. Torpedo running clear! Base on Midway is vital in our attempts to regain the upper hand in the Pacific. We are preparing a decisive strike against the main Japanese carrier force, but until that strike is ready, Midway facilities must be protected. Radar tracks have been picked up heading for the island. We need you to get airborne as quickly as possible to fend off this Japanese raid. Yeah, we got an 
advanced force of Japanese fighters. They must have come in low to dodge our radar. Ah, uh, crap. We're blocked in behind those damn bombers. Crow, get your squadron up. Clear that runway now! Break formation. Roger that. Protect those bombers. Ah, uh, crap. I got three huge formations of planes bearing in on us from the west. It must be a Jap attack. Don't worry, Control. My men and I can handle it. Crow, you take the rear left formation. Murphy, you take the rear right. And my men and I will take the lead squadron of Keith Bombers. Protect those bombers. Protecting the bombers. Next time. 
All right, Stewart. You can escort him back, seeing as you caused a snafu in the first place. Move! Get out of my sight! Incoming Betty bombers heading for the airfield. Position, men. Defending the area. Position, men. Engage at will. Defending the area. Roger that. a huge battle with several Jap carrier groups. Pearl Harbor was bad, but if we lose here at Midway, then the war is over for us. We've been taking regular assaults from enemy plane groups, so it's time to strike back. We need your wing to get out there and target the Japanese carriers. Each flat top you send to the bottom takes a hundred enemy planes off our backs. Lieutenant Commander Callahan will assign wings where they will do the most good. Good luck, Lieutenant. Our prayers go with you. Planes 
fire at will, but do not drop your bomb loads. We don't want to let these bastards through to our fleet, but we also need that ordnance.
fleets, maintain your formations. Steady. Steady. Drop, drop, drop! Yesterday at 0342 hours, the U.S. submarine Tambor surprised the cruiser Mogambi, forcing her into a collision with her sister ship, the Mikuma. This collision buckled the Mogambi's bow and breached the Mikuma's fuel tanks. The two cruisers are limping from the area, but we have different plans. It's time to get some payback for what happened to the Yorktown. Our scouts have spent the last several hours searching for the damaged vessels, and we finally think we have a good fix on their position. You are to quickly scramble from the Enterprise and join your squadron in an attack on the Makuma.
these fighters over here. Straight the decks before they all get airborne.
we're being followed. Back there in the clouds. I can just see something. Drop back and check it out, bro. I don't want us to get ambushed just after we land. I'll keep going with the rest of the squadron, acting like we don't see them. Now you be careful. Do you want some company, William? The only thing is, I'm low on ammo. No, I'll take care of it. You head back. There he is. That is the American who shot down brother Kazuya. Get him! I am a Kaito Hedigara of the 13th Squadron. You may have beaten our nearest member, but I am much more skilled. Prepare to be defeated, Yankee Dog. The Battle of Midway was a huge victory for us, but the Jap ambush took the edge off any satisfaction we might have felt. There was no way it was a coincidence that a whole Jap squadron found us all alone out there. Someone had to have told them where and when we were patrolling. Somehow, the Japs who'd found us were from the 13th Squadron. I'd splashed Kato Fujiwara, another of their aces. Callahan and I went and talked to the Admiral. We told him about the ambush and the earlier sabotage to my Corsair as well. He listened closely. We were making some pretty serious claims. Sabotage was one thing. It could just be a little professional rivalry for top place on the kills board. But the ambush, well, that's an act of treason, punishable by death. The boys were jumpy. News of the ambush had spread, and now there were rumors of a rat in the ranks. The Battle of Midway was where everything changed. We broke their codes and their plans were clear. Most of our fleet was waiting for the Japs to show up, ready to get revenge for what they did to us at Pearl Harbor. We had three carriers there, the Enterprise, the Hornet, and the Yorktown. To back them up, we had eight cruisers and 17 destroyers. But the Jap fleet was awesome. They sent six carriers, seven battleships, 14 cruisers, and 42 destroyers. Against their fleet, ours looked insignificant. The battle lasted three days, and when the smoke cleared, we saw the damage we'd done. We took out four of their carriers, the Akagi, the Kaga, the Hiryu, and the Soryu, and the heavy cruiser Mikuma. All up, we only lost one carrier, the Yorktown, and a single destroyer. But it wasn't just ships that the Japs lost at Midway. We also splashed twice as many of their planes as they got of ours. A lot of good Japanese pilots were shot down at Midway, and I don't think their Air Corps ever recovered. In just three days, we'd broken the back of their fleet. Their carrier strike force, the Kiru Batai, was all but wiped out. Even with their fleet wrecked, the Japs still had control of most of the Pacific. And thousands of miles south of Midway, the Japanese took control of Guadalcanal. The Japanese are close to completion of an airfield near Lunga Point on Guadalcanal. If this airfield is completed, the Japanese will cut off the Allied line between Australia and the U.S. Your mission is to attack the airfield and its surrounding defenses. Once these are destroyed, our C-47 transports and landing craft will deploy and secure the area. We also have some good news for you. Due to the shortage of qualified pilots, the Army has agreed to make available several P-38 Lightnings. The Japanese also have some new fighter types, so keep an eye over your shoulders.
We were headed for a place called Guadalcanal. It's a big jungle island and the Japs were well dug in. So we got ourselves ready for months of mud and sweat and mosquitoes and death. Okay, men. Let's see what these new beasts can do. Japanese cargo sub. They must be trying to sneak supplies to the island.
are your orders, sir? Paratroopers deployed. Crow, get your ass over to the airfield and provide assistance to the troops on the ground.
Engage at will. Roger that. formation. supplies in here to support their troops. Every night, Jap ships move down the slot in a supply run we call the Tokyo Express. A radio intercept has alerted us to a Japanese convoy carrying thousands of troops and a hefty load of supplies. Our cruisers scattered the convoy out past Florida Island, but they have had to withdraw to engage Japanese warships. Air power is the only thing that can reach the convoy now. So we need you to take a B-26 Marauder equipped for maritime strikes and go hunting for the scattered ships.
southeast at 12 knots. The cloud layer is at 6,000 feet. Your course to our Tojo friends is 359er. We hope that you have a good day, and thank you for flying with the Cactus Air Force. Fox 7 out of Guadalcanal. You're a little jumpy, aren't you? I don't look anything like a Jap. Sorry, mate, but we're a little uptight. Some bloody huge Japanese seaplane that we haven't seen before has been calling strikes down on us. Keep an eye out for the bastard, would you? Sure thing, buddy. I'm just glad you didn't shoot first and ask questions later. Thanks for the heads up, Navy. Sir, I'm detecting a surface contact on our radar, nearby our position.
give up. I've spotted the convoy. sort of supplies to risk us catching them in the open.
huge blip on the radar. It may be that seaplane we were warned about. All gunners, keep your eyes peeled. Now this is Crow. I'm engaging a large Japanese flying boat, probably an HAK type. Holy crap, look at the size of that son of a bitch. Must be important to have those guys for an escort. Looks like I'm in for a fight. campaign hangs in the balance. One of our carriers, the Wasp, has taken a torpedo hit and is limping off to be repaired. We've only got one operational carrier in the area, the Enterprise, and the Japs know it. They've launched a huge raid on the Enterprise. She is vital to the war effort in this theater, and you must protect her at all costs. Take out the incoming bombers and make sure she is still floating at the end of the day. Thanks, sir. I like the South Sea weather. Everybody throttle up. We need to haul ass to the Enterprise.
those ships. We're defending the ship.
tracks. Both surface forces and planes heading for our positions. We've got to get back there and help. What are your orders, sir? Break formation. Roger that.
Our time station at Guadalcanal should have been a welcome break from the monotony and the claustrophobia of carrier life. But the place was a mosquito-infested mud hole and it was still crawling with jabs. Our days were 90% boredom and 10% nail-biting terror. The Japs raided us regularly, usually from the air, but sometimes from the jungle where they were holed up. Callahan Stewart and I started a chess club to pass the time. It was either that or go insane waiting for the sound of planes. Our POW buddy Stewart was easily the best chess player, and he turned out to be pretty deadly in the air as well. It wasn't long before he made his way close to the top of the kills board. One day, out of the blue, the base commander came to see me. He had two letters from my mom. He said there'd been a delay in the mail delivery. I opened the first letter. It was bad news. Dad had never been 100% since the accident, but he'd gotten worse. She wanted me home to spend some time with him. I knew immediately what that second letter would say. It was too late to go home. I don't know if he was trying to keep my mind off what was going on at home, but the commander told me that the 13th Squadron was operating around the Gilbert Islands. He said the task force was going to retake the island that the Japs had captured from us at the start of the war. Our old friend the Admiral had requested pilots and the commander was sending our squadron to help out. We landed on Guadalcanal in August and took control of the Jap airfield. We called ourselves the Cactus Air Force. The Japs were well dug in and kept fighting for another six months. Our boys fought some of their hardest battles there in the jungle including the Battle of Bloody Ridge. Off the coast of Guadalcanal, we managed to cut off their supply lines and stop them from sending more reinforcements. It wasn't until December that their emperor finally gave permission for their troops to withdraw. Clearing the threat in the Pacific was turning out to be a long and tough campaign, but at Guadalcanal, we stuck our foot in the door and it wasn't going anywhere. In April of 43, our codebreakers located Admiral Yamamoto, the guy who planned the Pearl Harbor attacks. He was going to be flying in a bomber near Bougainville. 18 lightnings from Henderson Field flew hundreds of miles and shot down his Betty bomber. Before the war, Yamamoto had tried to talk his commanders out of attacking the U.S. They didn't listen, and even though he knew it was a bad idea, he planned the Pearl Harbor attack for them. At the start of the war, he predicted that for the first 6 to 12 months, he'd win victory upon victory. But after that, he said he had no expectation of success. He was a smart man and they never did find his body. For two years now, the Japs have been fortifying Tarawa Atoll against attack. And now it's time to bring the war to them. The atoll is strategically important to our war effort and we must take it back from the enemy. Crow, we want you to take a P-38 and photograph the defenses on the island. Remember, discretion is the better part of valor. Those photos are more important than heroics right now. Make sure you get them back here and into our hands. Japanese Rear Admiral Shibasaki Miichi has said it would take a million men and a hundred years for America to take Tarawa Atoll. Let's prove him wrong. The Japs had been in control of Terra Atoll long enough to concrete the whole darn place. The Marines landed there on the beaches, so it was up to us flyboys to soften the place up. Okay, Recon Flight, you're cool for takeoff. Be careful of that plane, buddy. Those cameras cost a fortune.
That's it. I'm in camera range. There's the first LZ. Any Marine that tries climbing over that must be crazy. Within range. Camera's running. The second LZ, in high detail. Camera rolling. That's the next LZ scouted. Say cheese, Mr. Tojo. Damn, too fast. I have to go slower to get these recon shots. I'm in optimum camera range. Damn, too fast. I have to go slower to get these recon shots. It took too long. Now the locals are gonna get all riled up about me buzzing them. That's it. I'm in camera range. Damn, too fast. I have to go slower to get these recon shots. Fourth LZ photographed. It's gonna be tough on those Marines. Within range. Camera's running. Camera rolling. Hell, I'm too far away. I have to stay closer to the target. Say cheese, Mr. Tojo. Son of a bitch, that must be Tojo Central. I'm in optimum camera range. Uh, go back to sleep, boys. Don't mind me. Go back to sleep, boys. Don't mind me. I'm in camera range. Oh, looks like they've rigged that pier to blow. They vectored interceptors onto me. Okay, Tojo, if you want to ride the lightning, here goes. Well, American spy, it seems that you have run out of luck. I am Taiki Hatekawa of the 13th Squadron. Perhaps you have heard of me. 13th Squadron are a bunch of cowards and rats, Asagawa. How many defenseless people did you murder in Pearl Harbor? Bro, a surprise attack. It's not the most honorable form of combat, but this is the nature of war. My men and I must stop you using all means necessary.
Way too hot for you, Essex. I wouldn't be spreading a picnic blanket out on that beach. That's for damn sure. Recon flight has revealed a weakness in Bedio's defenses. Their positions are concentrated seaward, so our strategy is to land troops via the lagoon and destroy the defenses from the ground. Your mission is to target the defensive positions so at least half of our amphibious assault vehicles can land. Other wings will deal with other targets, so stick to your section of the beach. Additionally, there are a number of strategic targets we need taken out, such as the fortified naval guns and concrete bunkers near the airfield. This is going to be tough. Are you tough enough, Lieutenant Crow? Listen up, people. This mission is the most important one we've been on in the last year, and I don't want anyone screwing it up. Watch your fire around the Marines, and careful when doing bombing runs. All fighters, take off immediately and head to the island. Marine forces are expecting you shortly. Roger, sir. Moving to the target area. Get the lead out, boys! Those Marines are really up against it today! Uh-oh. Aw, oh, hell, guys. I'm losing manifold pressure. Lots of smoke. Looks like I've blown a gasket somewhere. Turn him back. Oh, okay, Tom. Can't be helped. Try not to crack her up on the way back. Roger that, sir. Good luck, boys.
those ships. We'll defend the ships. Hey, we need air support.
now, sir. Protect those ships. We'll defend the ships. Tom Stewart was lucky, too lucky. His engine trouble was too convenient. He was back on the carrier safe in his bunk while we were fighting for our lives against the 13th Squadron. The other pilots were furious. They wanted his blood. They found Stewart in his bunk. They pulled him out, screaming traitor, Jap lover, and worse. Callahan and I could barely stop them from stringing him up right there. We got him out of there and back to Callahan's room. Tom pleaded with us. He promised he wasn't a traitor, that he hadn't sold us out to the Japs. I wanted to believe him, but there was part of me that wasn't sure. But the other guys, they wouldn't fly with him anymore. And even if he did fly with us again, he'd be likely to get a tail full of U.S. issue bullets. Callahan grounded him and took his wings away. He said it was for Stewart's own safety, but I think it was for all our sakes. Earlier, during the recon mission, I'd taken out an ace called Taiki Hasegawa from the 13th. I'd fought three of their top guys, but I still hadn't had a chance to fly against Shunagawa. The Japanese commander at Betio Island had promised it would take a million men a hundred years to take Tarawa. Rear Admiral Shibasaki, the commander there, had spent years fortifying the island. He'd put in new layer defenses that gave mutual support. When we did land there, after just a few hours of bombing, our Marines were cut to pieces by the Japs. The first wave suffered almost total casualties. Eventually we took the island, but not before we lost 1,500 men. The Japs lost over three times that many. Tara was a learning experience for us, a lesson in how not to take an island from the Japanese. The rest of 43 was quiet. We all pulled our fleets back for repairs and refitting. Back home, though, things weren't quiet. Our factories were running at full speed. Back then, we churned out 7,000 planes a month, compared to just 1,500 that the Japanese could produce. It wasn't just planes, though. Our shipyards were also running full tilt. 
Since the start of the war, we've produced 500 destroyers and escorts. With a shortage of raw materials, the Japs could barely manage 30. We have just received an urgent radio message from our top agent, codenamed Usurper. After infiltrating a secret Japanese airbase and retrieving vital war plans, Usurper escaped by stealing a Japanese seaplane Zero, called Roof. Unfortunately, his aircraft took several hits and he has made a forced landing. The Japanese will be looking for him too. You are to take a PBY Catalina and rescue him. We can guide you into the area of Usurper's last transmission. Usurper will fire a red flare to guide you to his exact location. Pick him up and return to base. His information could save many lives, Lieutenant. Two of the Jap carriers that hit us at Pearl Harbor were stationed at Marianas. We were heading into one hell of an air battle. No problem, Hornet. Let me just ease this big mama off the water. Keep their eyes peeled. I want to hear about it immediately if you spot anything. Boss, either we gotta pick off the Japs from a distance or run like hell. I wouldn't want to be dogfighting in this old sow. Sir, I can see a flare. We'll need to take those cruisers out before we can pick them up. And fast.
and I'll be right on board. Lord have mercy. What the hell is that? It's a Japanese carrier sub! Look at the size of the monster. Come on. We have to get the hell out of here.
was least flying if I've ever seen it. I'll be telling your CEO about it. but this big mama's still watertight, or we'll be able to keep her floating for a while yet. Put her down next to the cruisers, and we'll get one of them to winch you aboard for repairs. Thanks for the lit home, Lieutenant Crow. You really saved my bacon today. Yesterday, a U.S. submarine sank one of the last remaining Japanese carriers that attacked Pearl Harbor, the Shokaku. Today, we get our chance for revenge. We have located the carrier Hayo in waters off the Philippines. Your mission is to take a squadron of our new fighters, F-6F Hellcats, and punch a hole through the Japanese cap cover and flak. Strike planes from the Bunker Hill will follow you in. They carry the heavy ordnance necessary to send the Hayo to the bottom. Bombers inbound for the task force. 
These guys must have come from truck. Weapons free, men. Splash those bandits and make sure none of them get past us to the fleet. Japanese heavy bombers heading for the fleet. Take them out! Defend this position, men. Oh, you're straying too far. Men. We'll defend the area. Look out! More Japs coming in fast! Defend this position, men. The area is secure. We're defending this area. Ships. We're defending the ships. 
station. Roger that. Defend this position, men. Defending the area. Look at all those Japanese bastards. Right, strike planes. You hang back here. I'll stay here with my wing and cover you. All other wings, get in there and attack those fighters. Protect those bombers. Protecting the bombers.
a leave in this for you. Woo! Yeah! Okay, everyone, time to head home. Troubles. I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep up. We can't wait around, Crow. If we don't get back to the fleet, none of us will have a place to land. You're on your own. Good luck. I'll need it. I feel like a baby duck in a cockfight out here all by myself. that we meet under such uneven circumstances. Are all you Japanese aces full of hot air? Maybe you should have tried out for the Balloon Corps. I am Ibuki Ishihiro, second in command of the 13th Squadron. This time, I believe that we will have the last word. The last you will ever hear. It's a pity the rest of your squadron isn't here to share your fate. Still, it is only a matter of time before they join you. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that, Tojo. Tom, you crazy son of a bitch. Aren't you grounded? I stole a plane and took off when I heard you were in trouble. I couldn't stay home and let you hog all the fun. I'll draw them off. You head for the carrier. After him, man. Crow isn't going anywhere fast. We'll come back after we get his friend. Control, have you heard from Tom Stewart? No, Crow, I haven't. When I do find him, I'm gonna kick his can up and down this flight deck, and then I'm gonna send him to the stockade. He saved my life, sir. Last I saw of him, he's being chased by the 13th Squadron to the northeast. Give me another bird. I have to go look for him. He would have to play the goddamn hero. Well, if he survives, he's gonna wish he was never born. You turn in for the night, Crow. That's in order. I need you sharp tomorrow. I'll send out a fresh search team to look for him. You did well today, son. We don't need any more hotshot horse pucky. Call it a day. If it weren't for Tom Stewart, I'd be dead. He protected me from the Japs and then drew them away. That gave me a chance to make it back to the carrier safely. His body was recovered later. By the looks of it, he'd gone down fighting, and he'd taken out Ibuki Ishihiro, another 13th Squadron ace. One thing was certain, we were wrong about Stewart. He was a patriot to the end and he died proving it. There was no way I could repay him for what he did, nor to apologize for doubting him. Callahan and I petitioned the Admiral for a proper tribute. We buried Tom Stewart as a hero, not as a traitor. The Marianas turkey shoot was the end of the Japanese Navy as a real threat to us. Their mistakes were coming back to haunt them. The Zero was a great plane, but they decided that maneuverability was more important than pilot safety. Sure, this gave Jap pilots an advantage in one-on-one -on -one fights, but in battle situations, our planes were superior. Eventually, the Japs ran out of good pilots. In Marianas, their planes were flown by pilots barely out of flight school. During the turkey shoot, they lost 220 planes compared to just 20 for us. 
Their second mistake was at Pearl Harbor. Originally, there were meant to be three waves of attacks. With the success of the first two waves against our fleet, the third wave was called off. The third wave's target was the tanks that stored our entire fuel supply in the Pacific. Things could have turned out very different if we'd had fuel problems at the start of the war. The Japs still had one weapon we couldn't match. For hundreds of years, Japanese society has been influenced by Bushido, the code of the samurai. To them, Bushido is a way of dying. For a Jap soldier, there was no greater honor than to give his life bravely in battle. Their final weapon was the divine wind, the kamikaze. Serpa, the agent you rescued, has informed us that the Germans have delivered an advanced prototype fighter plane to the Japanese for an evaluation. This plane is powered by a turbojet propulsion system and is capable of almost 600 miles per hour. Your mission is to steal the prototype jet fighter, the ME-262, before the Japanese can evaluate it. Stealing the jet will not be easy. However, we are supplying you with a stolen Raiden fighter and a modified Japanese bomber that has been packed with 6,400 pounds of thermite. Your wingmen will steer the bomber into the base before bailing out. The resulting explosion should create a sufficient diversion for you to land the Raiden and steal the jet from right under their noses. Beware, we have received unconfirmed reports that the Germans have sent one of their ace pilots, Karl Heinz Kruger, to give a demonstration of the ME-262's capabilities. The Japs gathered all their capital ships in the Philippines to stop us taking it back. One of their ships, the Musashi, was about the biggest battleship ever built. So Crow, you're the clown that's supposed to get me to this Japanese base safely. Just make sure you don't attract any attention. And how do I do that exactly? I don't know. Fly casual. Keep your distance. Don't shoot anyone unless they shoot you first.
before he lets the cat out of the bag. Good luck, Zach. You too, William. I gotta land this thing and steal the ME-262 before the Japs regroup. It's a little hot down here. Time I got back to base. I better nurse this baby's throttle. It looks like these new engines are pretty damn touchy. The backroom boys want to sing in one piece, not pancaked all over a mountain. Crow, I'm picking up another radar contact. Looks like another ME-262 taking off from the island. Damn! That one saw me! Better watch out for fighters. Well, my American brother, it seems you are lucky as well, stupid. Did you think I was just going to let you steal a gift to our Japanese comrades? We have big plans for that plane you're in. Hey, hiya, Fritz! What's a cabbage eater like you doing in this neck of the woods? My name is Karl Hans Kroger, German ace and holder of the Iron Cross. I hope your funny, haha, <laughs> American fit will give comfort to your relatives when you are dead, little boy. Call yourself a pilot? Even the Poles flew better than that. She's a cantankerous bitch. I nearly bought the farm just taking off.
Your target today is the super battleship Masashi. The Masashi and his sister ship, the Yamoto, are the pride of the Japanese fleet. At 72,000 tons, they are the largest and potentially the most lethal ships ever built. However, the Masashi is lagging behind the main fleet. Without air cover or an AA screen from escorts, it's vulnerable. But it's a tough son of a bitch. We've already hit it with two raids and barely scratched the paint. This time, we want you to stay out there until it's destroyed. Watch out for the main guns. We lost one squadron in a previous raid to a massive AA weapon called the Beehive. If you see those things pointed your way, duck. Get out there and claim the prize. Okay, boys, take it easy when you sight the enemy. I don't want any of you coming down with buck fever. Defend this position, men. We're defending this area. Big enough to put a dent in it. Damn it! Everyone split up and move here! We can't afford to get caught in formation! And the main guns can't hit targets at close range! Break formation. That's it! Get in there and sink that son of a gun! Crow, I want your wing to move in first and target the rudder and propeller shafts. Aim for the fan tail on the back of the ship. Everyone else, distract their AA for now! Heading back for more bombs. 
crew, take your wing and destroy the primary bridge. Let's see how well she handles with no bridge crew calling the shots.
Leyte region has become a strategic focus on both sides over the last few days. At least three major Japanese task forces are in the area searching for the U.S. invasion force. Meanwhile, Admiral Halsey has two battleship flotillas out looking for the Japanese. We aren't fast enough to outrun a Japanese task force, and with only a small destroyer escort, there is no chance of fighting back. Command doesn't like not knowing where the Japs are, so we are sending all available planes out on scouting patrols. Your mission is to head to the Northwest Sector and ensure that this task force is not taken by surprise.
We are heading north after the main Japanese force. There are at least four Japanese carriers out there that we want eradicated from this theater. The centerpiece of the task force is the carrier Zukaku. She's an old friend of ours, the last remaining carrier that was involved in the attack on Pearl. Once you find that fleet, it's a free fire zone. Sink as many Japanese ships as you can, but be on the lookout for Japanese strike planes sent in retaliation against our fleet. Even though the ranks of their aviators have been depleted by recent battles, the Japs have some lethal new fighter types in service, so stay alert and watch your back. We've got more in 
inbound Japs. Dive bombers coming from the southwest this time.
the Japs on the run and we weren't going to stop till we bombed Tokyo to hell. While the rest of the guys were celebrating, I could only think of one thing, that Shun Agawa, the squadron leader of the 13th, would somehow escape. One night there was a knock on my door. It was the Admiral. He had a visit from one of the other pilots, Mike Canning. Mike had admitted to sabotaging my plane after we sank the Shoho. He said he wanted to knock me down a peg or two on the kills board and that he was sorry. He got off lightly and he was going to be peeling potatoes for the rest of the war. The Admiral also said he had something for me. It was a crumpled letter that he'd gotten unofficially. The letter was from the 13th Squadron, and it was addressed to me. It seemed that while I was after them, they were after me. I opened the letter. There were just two words on it, Iwo Jima. It was from Shun Nagawa, the leader of the 13th Squadron. I would get my wish, a chance to fly against Agawa and avenge my brother. Turkey shoot was a disaster for Jap pilots, then the Battle of Lady Gulf was a disaster for their whole navy. When we landed on Lady Island in the Philippines, the remains of the Japanese fleet sailed to meet us for the final great naval battle of the war. 
The Japanese Navy was outclassed and the battle was a decisive victory for the U.S. Even so, the kamikaze attacks did a huge amount of damage, not all of it physical. The kamikaze sank over 15 U.S. ships in the Philippines. Over the entire war, the kamikaze sank 40 ships. When the Battle of Lady Gulf was over, we'd sunk the biggest ship I'd ever seen, their super battleship Musashi. We also sunk the carrier Zukaku, the final survivor of the Pearl Harbor attack. In all, the Japs lost 10 times as many ships and planes as us. With their defeat at the Battle of Lady Gulf, the Japanese Navy was finished. have pushed the enemy all the way back to their island fortress of Iwo Jima. In order to strike at the Japanese mainland, we must take Iwo Jima's airfields. The Japanese intend to make us pay for every yard. But be warned, the Japs are going to try everything they can to stop us. They've been quiet so far, but there are two airfields on that rock. So be on the lookout for interceptors. Iwo Jima is just a lump of volcanic rock out in the middle of nowhere, but it was one step closer to Japan, and it had a couple of nice fat runways for our B-29s. Sir, you've got company. 
Take those ships! We're defending the ships. Companies arrived. Those big bastards from the south should be in visual range. Our radar confirms enemy bombers inbound from 175. -er. Protect those ships! We'll defend the ship. ships we're defending the ships Break formation. 
Yes, sir. Go after the grounded planes first, bro. Try to keep them from getting airborne.
Iwo Jima is heavily fortified with anti-ship guns, pillboxes, and a vast underground cave system. We have taken a leaf out of Doolittle's book and borrowed some B-25 ground attack bomber variants off the army. We need you to drop smoke flares into the bunkers and the hidden coastal guns. And the gunners on our battleship will finish the job. Once the guns are knocked out, the Marines can move in. Once their amp tracks land, support the Marines advance by destroying the machine gun nests, pillboxes, and enemy soldiers. Okay, Murphy. You better come running if I holler, though. This thing ain't gonna be much use if I run into some fighters. Trust me. I'll make sure they don't touch a hair on your little head. Okay, Lieutenant. Gun those engines and get those big bastards off my deck. Bomber Squadron, listen up. Pro, I want you and your men to concentrate on flattening those fortified naval guns. We'll keep the fighters off your back. You worry about getting your bombs on the mark. Yes, sir. We'll smash them to rubble. Keep an eye out for large fortified guns in concrete bunkers, man. This is Callahan off the Lexington. My wing is coming in from the west. I can see fighter wings launching from the Japanese air bases. Watch yourself. Don't sweat it, Lieutenant. I can take care of them. Well, here's the target, sir. Fire them nice and slow so I can mark them with a smoke flare. Smoke away.
destroyed.
Park. Everybody watch your fire around the LZ. sides of the island and captured the southern airfield. From here we can take the rest of the island. Your mission is to attack the Japanese defenses around the northern airfield. Once you've completed your objectives, head south to support an assault on Mount Suribashi by the Marines. The Japs on top of that mountain can put fire down on anything that moves on this rock, and we're getting a little sick of the attention. Take them out and cover the Marines until they get to the top. We just got our first load of the new Bearcat fighters. It's a tough and fast little SOB. Perfect for a mission like this. Okay, boys. Throttle up. It's time to get this show on the road. Lexington, I am moving to attack the airfield. This is B-25, flight leader of the route. We are approaching Iwo Jima. ETA, two minutes. I hope you flatten their AA, pilot. Can't fight us! I'll take care of this lot! <laughs>
Spotters say we've got vehicles leaving the bombed HQ. I'll bet it's their commander. Take out those chiefs from top priority. You'd better hit those two other vehicles, Crow. The only way to make sure you got them. Come on, Crow, just one more left. That's it, you got a nice shooting, Crow.
up on everything you've got, pilot! Bro, that fortress in the crater of Mount Suribachi is the key to taking this goddamn island. You have to destroy it, or they'll just keep raining down artillery on us. You can weaken it by first taking out the comm center. Then hit the power station before focusing on the main complex. You guys stay out of its way. I'll take care of this. I am Shun Nogawa, leader of the 30th Squadron. Lieutenant Crow, know this. You will never set foot on Japanese soil while I yet live. I challenge you. You and your squadron killed a lot of my friends, Agawa. My brother on the Arizona, he never even had a chance. Well, perhaps today you will join him. Don't talk. Fight or die. My Indian fighter is much better than yours, American. We are building thousands of these advanced fighters. Are you a man by your fear? Restrain your joy. This fight is only just beginning.
I didn't care that Iwo Jima was won, or that the way lay opened in Japan. I only cared that I defeated Shunagawa in the 13th Squadron, and that I'd avenged Charlie's death. The Admiral presented us with the Distinguished Flying Cross for achievement for our country, and then he sent us home. For our squadron, the war was over. I didn't know what to feel, jubilation or relief. I survived, but I'd lost so much in just a few years. My brother and father were dead, as well as countless good men I flew with. I sent a lot of Japs to the bottom of the ocean. Some of them must have been good men too. Pretty soon we shipped out for home. It was the longest trip I'd ever taken, but I'll never forget seeing the U.S. soil again. Mom looked tired, but boy was I glad to see her. First thing we did was catch a train to Washington, D.C. to see where Charlie and Dad were buried. I still see Callahan and the rest of the boys every year. We have a drink and salute the thousands of men who are the real heroes of the Pacific. The invasion of Iwo Jima was the final stepping stone to Japan. Once we controlled the airfield on the island, we could easily stage bombing raids against mainland Japan itself. In the first raid alone, almost 280 super fortresses bombed Tokyo and raced 10 square miles of the city. Back in the U.S., our scientists were working on a top-secret project to develop a fearsome new weapon, the atomic bomb. But the Japanese weren't about to give up. When their prime minister announced that they would fight to the end rather than surrender, our leaders authorized the dropping of the A-bomb. They hoped that in the long run, this would kill fewer people than a full-scale land invasion. Just 10 days after the Trinity test, the parts were shipped to Tinian Island. On the 6th of August, the Enola Gay lifted off from Tinian and headed for Japan. Just three and a half hours later, they reached the city of Hiroshima. The bomb, Little Boy, detonated 2,000 feet off the ground. The blast leveled 90% of the city. Three days later, the boxcar headed for the island of Kyushu. The weather got bad, so the pilot switched to his secondary target, a torpedo factory at Nagasaki. His bomb, Fat Man, exploded over Nagasaki. The hills limited the damage to just 30% of the city. All up, the bombs killed about 100,000 people and injured more. Five days after Nagasaki, the Japanese Emperor Hirohito announced his country's surrender. The war was over. We'd beaten the Japs, peace was restored in the Pacific, and our boys headed home.